In a previous video, we discussed the two options, either the universe is eternal or had a beginning. And while skeptics had rejected Genesis, they have circled back to the idea in Genesis 1.1 that the universe came into existence suddenly from nothing. I noted that an important question is if natural processes reveal a discernible direction. The Enlightenment folks optimistically imagined a universe and natural order that was inherently evolving upwardly, self-ordering towards ever higher levels of order. Remove the obstacle of the biblical notion of the Edenic curse, and given enough time, natural processes alone would organize matter into an increasingly complex universe and animate matter into living forms, eventually humans, and then even human civilizations would continually improve until a paradise earth was achieved. On the other hand, Genesis 3, 17-19 tells us that after sin entered, God placed nature under a curse of decline and death. This was echoed in Psalm 102, where it speaks of the universe wearing out like a garment. In Romans 8, where Paul spoke of the natural order being subjected to futility and corruption. And 1 John 2, 17, where John said the world is passing away. So you have two opposite direction stories for nature. One imagines continual inherent progress and development, while the other describes a curse of decline, decay, and death. Which of these stories portrays the reality concerning natural processes? After the upward progress notion was firmly entrenched in the imaginations of Enlightenment philosophers, in the 1800s, William Thompson and others were working on heat transfer and steam engines, and they realized that to maintain the operation of a steam locomotive, wood had to be continually fed into the firebox to keep the water in the boiler hot enough to make steam. In other words, natural processes seemed to be unwinding. There seemed to be a fixed amount of matter and energy. You could convert them but each conversion allowed some energy to escape and was lost for future work. So they codified these observations into the first and second principles of thermodynamics. There is a fixed amount of matter and energy, and natural processes are moving towards disorder. Humans have long observed the reality of the second principle man has long been aware that his world has a tendency to fall apart. Tools wear out, fishing nets need repair, roofs leak, iron rusts, wood decays, loved ones sicken and die, relatives quarrel, and nations make war. However, for an Enlightenment movement wanting to believe that there was an inherent tendency in nature to move from disorder to order and organization, these findings were a major bummer. So some ignored the problem and even tried to promote the inherent progress notion as a scientific law. But physicists refused to play along with that notion. To say that there is an obvious tendency of nature from disorder to order and organization and to advance this idea to a fourth law is to misunderstand completely and to compromise all of thermodynamics. Some have tried to suggest that there are exceptions where the second principle does not apply, but physicists have not been willing to play along with that notion either. There is thus no justification for the view, often glibly repeated, that the second law of thermodynamics is only statistically true, in the sense that microscopic violations repeatedly occur but never violations of any serious magnitude. On the contrary, no evidence has ever been presented that the second law breaks down under any circumstances. Evolutionary progress advocates have about as much interest in thermodynamics as in Genesis 3, 17 to 19, which is none. An uninvited guest at any discussion of the origin of life and of evolution, from the materialistic reductionist point of view, is the role of thermodynamic entropy, and the heat death of the universe, which it predicts. 
Well, regardless of the imaginative wishful thinking of Enlightenment folks, the evidence from nature continues to be that natural processes are moving towards disorder and the eventual heat death of the universe. We battle the second law of thermodynamics every day. It takes extra energy, intelligently applied, to restore and maintain order. Otherwise, disorder just happens. It's not just that people are messy, it takes less energy to drop your dirty clothes where you take them off, rather than pick them up and put them in the hamper. To leave tools where you use them, rather than pick them up and put them back in their proper spot on the tool bench. To just leave dirty dishes in the kitchen where you use them, then to put them in the sink and wash them, and then put them back in the cupboard. The Bible is correct. Natural processes are not organizing matter towards ever higher levels of order, but going in the opposite direction. Life forms grow old, get sick, and die. Clothes wear out. Machinery and buildings deteriorate without maintenance. There is a general curse of decay and disorder, for things are wearing out like a garment, under futility and corruption, and passing away. In these videos, we have noted that evidence supports three specific ideas about nature taught in Genesis 1 through 3. The universe came into existence suddenly from nothing. The natural order looks like it was intelligently designed. And natural processes are inherently tending towards increasing disorder.